Thanks, Tracy. And Tracy is forever asking me questions that I can never answer. But uh, be that as it may, I asked Tracy a question last week, and I said, I'm coming along to this thing. What do you want me to talk about? Uh, and she said, well, why don't you talk about mergers and acquisitions? Uh, so to some extent, I'm going to avoid mergers and acquisitions. So I think there's a much bigger play in the industry, and the industry has to really pull itself into line to become a lot more competitive than it currently is. And I'd like to applaud what Namaska uh, is doing and also Neo Metals, because I, I think they're, they're trending towards the right business model. And what I'm going to tell you about today is the way I think the industry can improve itself, and I'm going to talk specifically about hard rock. I will draw some comparisons with the brine producers because you've got to have a benchmark and at the moment the brine producers are, of course, the lowest cost producers. So who can deliver on their promises? That's a 2014 rundown on global production. The purple is green bushes in Western Australia, so that's China. About half of the red, which is South America, is China. The yellow is China. So if you split that into types of ore, effectively uh, half of it is hard rock and half of it is brine production. But the hard rock is accelerating. There's no doubt about that. So what are the issues that the brine producers have? It's, it's not all, all beer and skittles out there. It's hard work. Uh, long commissioning times, high capital costs, climate dependent, of course. You've got large volumes of, of solution to manage and they're evaporated by using the sun. So the Atacama Desert's a really good place because it doesn't ri rain very often. One in a hundred year flood last year. Uh, variable solution chemistry, you don't want too much uh, magnesium in the solutions, too difficult and expensive to remove. The aquifers are, are somewhat unpredictable that they pump from. And a couple of years ago, I was talking to the Rockwood guys, who are the only people in the business that have done the full 360 degrees. They've done hard rock, were put out of business in 1983 by the Chileans, went to Chile, bought a license, started producing, and then paid uh, $1.2 billion to buy half of Tallison. Uh, the Greenbushes operation, I said to these guys, you know, why are you putting your money in, in hard rock? And they said, well, the brines are unsustainable. At that stage, I fell off my chair. And I said, how the hell can you say that? And they said, oh, well, uh, recovering the, the brine is like sucking water out of a sponge with a drinking straw. And I thought that was a fabulous analogy. The sponge, of course, is the aquifer. The drinking straw is the, uh, uh, the drill hole and your mouth's the uh, processing plant, and not much gets to the processing plant. Uh, there have been uh, failures with capital expansions. Resource to reserve conversion is terrible. It's like the oil industry, and those conversions are only about 10%. So ignore the very large resource figures you see on some of these things. And uh, they rely very heavily on byproduct credits. Now, that may be an advantage or a disadvantage, but in a falling potash market at the moment, it's quite clearly a disadvantage. Hard rock producers, no beer and skittles there either. Um, high operating costs in comparison to the brines, and that's a consequence of using um, traditional methods for processing. Constrained by downstream converters, they're all sitting in China and they tend to be a bottleneck one way or another, whether it be by way of capacity or the types of materials they can process. And most of the uh, production doesn't have a nexus with the end user. So what drives the historic costs in hard rock? Antiquation to a large extent, and I won't go into that in a great, great amount of detail, but uh, the standard processing technology is roasting, throwing dollar bills into a furnace, and then leaching. And to do that, you need a high grade. So spodumene is generally what you shoot for. Because you, you, you've got these high grade cutoffs, you've got a high operating cost. Uh, your reserves tend to be smaller than they might otherwise would be because you've got to alienate some of the material, if not the spodumene itself, other minerals that contain lithium. Uh, and that relegates uh, materials unnecessarily to uh, waste dumps and tailings dams. But regardless of that, the smart money is moving into hard rock. Now, why is that so? People are obviously looking at uh, rising prices where the, the sensitivities that I've previously mentioned don't matter as much. 
uh, looking at uh, breakthroughs in technology that may change the energy balance. Um, Realisation that uh, you may be able to, with those technologies, process low, lower grades uh, and awaiting processes that can also uh, produce from fine grain materials. But what we need is a paradigm shift in the, uh, the operating cost profile. So the opportunity is really finding the solution to that, driven by the battery market, of, of course, which starts with minerals. Um, and this is where we are today, constipated supply chain. Uh, most accessible lithium's the expensive stuff. Uh, the spodumene, there's plenty of it lying around, but it, it does cost a bit to produce it. Downstream processing plants are antiquated, as I've mentioned. And to some extent, we've got a, a lot of uh, potential spodumene producers coming on stream that really don't have the answers. They're, they're looking at launching into uh, what is taking the, the, the global umbrella, the, the high cost end of uh, lithi lithium, chemical, lithium chemical chain. So the solution is uh, improved efficiencies. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And applying that to the resources that we have available, uh, looking at technologies that, that'll take the waste and turn it into ore, if you like, um, and have flexible processes that'll handle uh, a range of physical properties in the concentrates, different uh, chemical characteristics, and a wide range of min mineralogy. Uh, not surprisingly, given Lithium Australia owns a silage process, I believe that's probably the solution. So here's the cost curve. Um, this is the one that everyone uses. It's a few years out of date, but we're waiting to save up the money and buy another Roskill report so we can get an update. That's where the... Uh, uh, the spodumene producers sit around the $4,000 mark uh, and I should just go back. The, the green blocks are the brine producers. So the brine producers have a median down around the uh, $2,000 mark to go to lithium carbonate. Silage, that's what we reckon we can get it down to. And our, uh, our process for uh, De-risking this at the moment, we're doing all the uh, bench, bench scale completion work. We start piloting uh, next month with ANSTO, the Australian government, partially under government grants. Uh, we hope to commit to demonstration plant by the end of the year and then go to commercial production. Why silage? Well, there it is. It has a lot of advantages, zero energy footprint. Um, not all that sensitive to grade, a lot of byproduct credits um, and the capability to produce battery grade chemicals. Um, it's a hydromet process, so you're not pouring a lot of energy into the system. It's all done in solution and it's very adaptable. It'll handle all silicate minerals. There's a, a rough flow sheet, starts off with a sulphur burning acid plant, add a few other reagents to it. Uh, custom design the lixiviant, uh, dissolve the material, pH adjustment, temperature adjustment, pull out the uh, byproducts and the various bits and pieces. And we started this by looking at various minerals in sulfuric acid and wondered why the leach curves were different. We found out the, uh, the fundamental reasons behind that. And uh, you notice there's in waldite, a lithium mica dissolves pretty easily in sulfuric acid. Uh, Spodumene will be waiting for a couple of centuries for that happen, to happen. But if you provide the right conditions to all of these things, you can lift everything to the same leach curve. So that's what it's all about. It's a zero energy process that uh, effectively designs a lixivient to the mineral and pulls it out with uh, residence times in general around about four hours, pulling out 90% or thereabouts of, uh, well, any metal you want to pull out of it, quite frankly. And at the moment, we're, we're doing something really radical. We're applying some of this to refractory gold, not to pull the gold out, to get, ri get rid of the waste. Um, so the corporate solution, I think, is looking at technology and matching the technology to the types of deposits. Uh, fairly important, I think, to vertically integrate, and that's the sort of thing that NAMASCA has done and done very well. 
and certainly Neo Metals are following suit there. Uh, and that bypass is one of the bottlenecks being the converters, allows you to build the relationship with the, the customer and get your financing by way of uh, offtake agreements. Effectively, um, get the financial insurance to uh, build, build your operation. So corporate, corporate uh, structures need to be uh, based on delivering a, a product at low cost uh, and comparable with the brine producers, of course. Integrate the supply chain, which is the sort of thing that uh, Namaska have done, and use the offtake to your best possible advantage. And we think we have the tools to that. This is the company, that's its capital structure. And uh, this, is, this is the usual puff out your chest in a corporate manner, and these are all the good things we've done. I, I will uh, also pass a bit of credit to our partners in Mexico, Alex, who are in the audience today. Uh, we're not only working on spodumene, we're not only working on lithium micas, we're also working with Alex on lithium clays in Mexico. Uh, so we're looking at the full spectrum. We believe we can provide a commercial solution for the industry to start to integrate, bypass the middlemen and grow straight from mine gate to battery supply. So that's where I think we need to go. It's all about matching the technology with the ore deposit. <laughs>